for years, and I'll continue to say it for years, where screen printers do not make money printing shirts, but they make money selling shirts. So if you can really focus on selling shirts um, and, and just kind of keep that idea in your mind, what do I need to do to be able, to give me the opportunity to sell more shirts? And always keep that as a decision maker. It's not the only decision maker, of course, when you're looking at business decisions, but it needs to be a key one because why does the average person get an automatic? So they can print faster, so they can pump more jobs out. Well, why do they want to pump more jobs out? Well, if you're spending less time on press and you're one in your two man crew, mm -hmm. then you can spend more time marketing and selling yourself. Why do we buy DTG? So we could fix problems faster and spend more time making the bigger deals. Look at Trinity Cactus. Why do we get a DTG? So that we could have more designs out there and spend less money with overhead and just turn and burn really quickly. So that means that we can spend more time marketing. We can spend more time making phone calls. We can spend more time doing art. It's all for, for a lot of those really a way to, to sell more in a time thing. The cost factor was always a tough thing too. So we actually developed with the screen printing side a pricing matrix where outside of one color white on a black shirt, we could sell a shirt, um, anything that was 24 pieces or less, we typically would throw it on the direct garment printer. And our, our prices actually were averaged out to where, even if I quote it as a screen printing design and I decided to do it on DDG, mm -hmm. I'm not losing any money and I'm at least making some because I've saved time. With the polyprint, that's, that's allowed us to do even more because the ink costs are so much less than the average DTG mm -hmm. that it allows me to kind of extend that gamut. So a lot of things that I've been doing lately when we've been you know, testing this printer more and more is actually work with local businesses and, and talking with them about kind of some of the struggles they've had. And, and it's all the same thing that you hear, you know, to, to get a good price, you got to buy a bunch, but you don't know if you're going to be able to sell that design or that shirt. So having a DTG allows you to do these proof of concepts and you're charging for this stuff too. Like that, I want to be very clear. Mm -hmm. You're doing a did you, of did you alter your, your pricing matrix after you bought it? A little bit. Yeah. So our, up or down? Yeah, up um, for anything that was under 24 pieces, it went it went up a tad. Mm -hmm. So it, it, two things happened. It extended from our minimum being 12 to mm -hmm. to one. That gap between 12 and 24 went up just a little bit at the time. And what? Why did you? Why do you feel like it went up? Time. It, it really it just went up time because uh, time and the cost of ink mm -hmm. is mainly what it was. So with screen printing, your problem is all the time that goes into setting up the job. And with direct to garment printing, sometimes your time goes into how long it takes to print. So well, I'm mainly talking about that when you are doing a, a job that's full color front, full color back on dark shirts, that's when time becomes a factor, a mm -hmm. real big factor with direct to garment, right? And then the ink cost. Ink cost on DTG are, all, are gonna be substantially higher than screen printing, of course. So that was really the major factor, but what you'll find is that it, with most direct to garment printing settings, you have this benchmark of 24 pieces. And, and again, it depends on the shop. So this is not set in stone. This shop, it's actually more like 42 now with, with the poly print. But let's say 24 is kind of like your fulcrum, your tipping point. With DTG, as you are printing less shirts under 24, your profit can go up because of the smaller amount of time it takes you to do it versus traditional screen printing. When you hit that mark in most shops, which is at 24, mm -hmm. and you go screen printing over DTG, your profit goes up because you're spending less time for the course of the job printing. For me, I, I really look at that as a time factor alongside with the ink cost, but printers make money selling shirts, not printing shirts. So, so time's a big what thing. is, you talk about the ink cost, what, like roughly what is the ink cost for a, a white garment versus dark garment? So for a white garment versus a dark garment, the biggest difference you're going to see with DTG is the white ink cost. White ink in DTG typically is the most expensive. Now, over the years, industry-wide, uh, a lot of people have made it to where, or a lot of manufacturers and distributors are making it to where if you buy CMYK versus white, the purchase price costs the same. But for the printing side of it, you typically are going to print more white ink than you are CMYK. And so on a, on a light garment shirt, it's going to usually be 25% the cost of, of that same print on a dark shirt. And again, that's different from every DTG, even mm -hmm. some shops. So not set in stone, but that's a good kind of rule of thumb, 25, 30% cheaper. 
And typically, you know, your average 12 inch by 12 inch design on a dark colored shirt with average CTG cost is around four dollars for the mm. ink. That's a dark, you said. Right. That's mainly because of the white ink. You're printing so much white ink on there. That's sometimes not even taking into account the pre-treatment cost, which typically you're looking at a quarter for the cost of that. It's 25 cents. With the polyprint, it's the most I've, I've spent on a 12 by 12 image was like $1.80 on, uh, on a dark image. So it's the ink, pro, the ink cost is a lot less on the forefront. And then another big factor, no matter what dark color printer you're looking into, is, is how much ink do you use over time? through maintenance and just waste. Um, so these printers across the board, you know, they're going to be pulling some ink through the heads to make sure that the ink does, or that the head does not clog up and mm -hmm. things like that. Some of them do automatic maintenance and that helps the heads stay clear and, and works really well with that. So understanding how much ink you use on that over time is a big thing too. Yeah, that's very interesting. Um, everybody always has questions of how to price it as well. Yeah. Um, it, based on ink cost, based on you can easily calculate the time, you know, per shirt for the person and, and based on what you're paying them hourly. Is that what you did to calculate those prices for 1 to 24? And yeah, did you separate absolutely. them from dark versus light garments too? Yes. Yeah, so so typically we're going to separate it from dark versus light. Got it. And um, although, you know, I've actually been toying around with that because – Traditionally and initially, so this is another thing that's actually changed. That's, I'm glad you asked this question. Traditionally, my DTG pricing would be separated from light and dark. When you're going down this road of, I want to try to come out with one price list or as few amount of price lists as possible, because because again, you want to be able to kind of on the fly tell a customer at least a ballpark figure, right? Sure. Even if that means that you have to whip out a, a something that you've put on your phone or whatever. This new pricing model that we've put together we actually charge the same price for a light shirt that we do a dark shirt on DTG. It's kind of like one of those things that as a printer, we can say, all right, well, if we lower this price just a little bit, or if we sometimes are going to take these designs and do them on screen printing, um, then that's going to be fine across the board. So we, we're kind of, it's a marketing strategy kind of too, um, or it's just single, single shirt pricing, right? Light or dark, same thing. Big caveat. <clears throat> If you're doing contract ETG, you absolutely have to have a separate pricing period. And probably for a lot of instances, it's good to have separate pricing. But kind of the goal that we're with this specific shop that we're putting together is as frictionless of a sell cycle as possible. Meaning I want to be able to tell someone very quickly mm -hmm. what it's going to cost them, when I can get it to them, and woo them really fast. Because sales, even in screen printing, is about emotion. So if they're excited... Um, and I can give them a good price and I can give them a good turnaround and I can get them to say yes within the first one or two phone calls as a printer. That's amazing. Right? So that's really for me over the years been a big goal is figuring out the fastest way to do that and simplifying the, the, um, the pricing model is, is one option. Interesting. Not, not lowering the price, simplifying right, it. Simplifying. <laughs>